Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So guys, I warned you, they're coming for this stuff, and sure as hell they are. We usually joke tongue-in-cheek on the channel about various preparedness items that they're going to make illegal someday. Well, in this case, it's actually come true. So stick with me if you're a Canadian or American resident. Also, we need to talk about the government regulating Canadian YouTube content. This is something which may well have drastic implications for Canadian content creators like myself. And you need to know now before they essentially shut us down, okay? Now, first off, uh, as you can see here, we're in the part of the studio that we're actually gonna be using for an indoor garden. It's actually a lot bigger. This is the tail end of it here. And uh, we're gonna be relying mostly on natural light, we'll say, but it's gonna be supplemented with a lot of artificial light that is going to be powered in part via solar. Now, working on this project with us is Gardening in Canada. She has her own YouTube channel. Go check her out. We've collaborated with her on numerous videos, one of which is already released. A wealth of knowledge, even if you're a lifelong gardener, I assure you, uh, she has just a lot of information to share. A soil scientist, very, very knowledgeable. Blew my mind with some of the things that she's been teaching us. So. Before we get to that, let's kill this backlighting here. Drop the zombie shutters, just to protect our six, even though we got the body armor t-shirt on. It's gonna help out with that backlighting. Now, as you can see, I do have the premier body armor t-shirt on. This is probably one of the most inconspicuous things. Obviously, you would wear a jacket over it or a sweater or something like that. Uh, Premier Body Armor does ship to Canada. Certain provinces have different regulations. The province I live in has no regulations. So you can get this here without any PAL or permit. Some provinces are gonna require a purchase and acquisition license, which any gun owner knows is for the, the ability to purchase and acquire a firearm. Uh, not all provinces will require that. This is the T-shirt. They have you know, your level four, plate carriers or level three plus with proprietary materials. They also have backpack inserts, which I think are among the most practical thing you can have. Very lightweight, we'll stop a 357 Magnum. You won't even really know it's in there. And the great thing about the backpack is that you can also kind of use it as a shield. So, you know, it's not fast to your person. So there's the ability to uh, shield a little one or, or somebody else who might need it if you find yourself in one of these scary scenarios. Now, why am I talking about body armor? And by the way, you can get 10% off, use code Canadian Prepper, go through the link in the description. Because it's probably gonna be illegal someday in a lot of places. Uh, the New York governor has signed a bill that bans semi-auto rifles for those under 21 and outlaws Body armor. New York Governor Kathy Hochul signed a sweeping gun reform bill to ban anyone under the age of 21 from buying and possessing a semi-auto rifle and criminalizing those, of course, who make mass threats, which I totally agree with. I'm not against that last part at all. Um, another bill, however, would ban the sale of body armor to people outside law enforcement or other state-designated professions, and it will add micro-stamping to bullets, which can better trace their origins. Okay, so this is very problematic, of course, if you're a prepper, because as preppers and as upstanding citizens who abide by the law and take personal responsibility for ourselves, uh, we feel that we should be entitled to the right to have this type of defensive tool. Now, you think this would be the last thing to go, right? You think that body armor would be last on their list, but I think because it doesn't get a lot of attention, especially from the firearms advocacy groups, you know, it's something that they can, they can basically ban without drawing a lot of fire, no pun intended, uh, by these uh, various advocacy groups, whether it's the NRA or the CCFR here in Canada. It's easier, okay, it's, a, it's an easy win. And uh, what they're saying is that in half of the mass shooter scenarios, you're, the shooter is wearing body armor, okay? And that is why they, they need to regulate it. Well, if that was the case and you've already regulated firearms, it would make sense that you would afford a, a law-abiding legal gun owner the same right to purchase and acquire this level of personal protection because we can think of plenty of scenarios which people who are not state-designated professionals would want to use it 
in a way which is perfectly legal, okay? Maybe, you know, you're, there's a home invasion, okay? I would even go so far to say that, you know, we, we put life jackets on, on uh, cruise boats or, or boats. Why not have body armor, vests for all children in schools? You know, people say, well, it's too much money. Well, how much, you know, how much are we willing to, how much do we value our children? I think that that's something which should actually be considered, to have body armor, vests, or protective vests in the back of each classroom, in such case that there's an incident, then those students will, will stand a better chance, okay? If, at least if you're not going to put firearms in the teacher's hands or put armed security guards in the schools, at least do that little bit. Anyways, that's an aside. Um, I can think of countless scenarios, whether it's a home invasion scenario, maybe you work a dangerous job that doesn't fall under this state-designated profession, you work a dangerous job in a dangerous neighborhood, which are, are more and more numerous today. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't see any reason why a person shouldn't be able to, to own this stuff, especially if you're law-abiding and you're vetted. Like, we have a, a fairly stringent vetting process here in Canada in order to get a purchase and acquisition license that, you know, there's no reason why in certain provinces, I personally think that you should need a permit that goes above and beyond that. Now, in the province I live in, you don't need any of that, you know, great. More freedom, I'm all about more freedom and personal responsibility. Now, of course, there's, there's more nuance to that, but we're not going to get into that here today. I don't want somebody to run with that and you know, start challenging me on it in the comments, which of course somebody will. Anyways, let's talk about this YouTube issue. Now, YouTube sent me an email today, not a personal email. They sent this to all Canadian content creators, I'm sure, and outlining, or outlining what uh, is going to be proposed in this, or going to be included in Bill C-11. So it's the end of the day, guys. I've shot like three or four videos already today, trying to keep my thoughts straight here. Now, basically, B Bill C... <laughs> Jesus, I should, just, I should just restart. Should I restart? No, let's keep going. Bill C-11 is going to affect us majorly, okay? And it's going to dictate how and where our content appears on the platform, including the YouTube homepage or watch next section. What could go wrong in a supposed democracy where you have free and fair elections to have the content on social media re regulated by the government who is currently in power. What could possibly go wrong, right? They also, this bill is also going to apply rules that could require you to prove that each individual video you upload meets the complex legal definition of Canadian content. This advantages Canadian media companies that have large teams and have followed these rules for decades, okay? So this means that if you are a major media company in Canada, like CTV, CBC, you're gonna be able to benefit from this greatly because your content is gonna be pushed to the fore, even if people perhaps don't wanna watch it. Now, there is a potential negative drawback to that, however, because this is gonna require some creators to be promoted over others. The, the whole uh, justification for this is they're trying to, they, the government feels that they need to push Canadian content. Even though Canadian musicians, I mean, this is the golden age of Canadian musicians. I mean, we have so many top-end YouTube content creators who, are, who have the biggest channels, who are getting the most views. We don't need the government to get involved in that. But of course, I think it's because the ma major media companies are losing viewership, and this is a way to get their crap in front of our eyeballs once again, even though the people have voted, the people have chosen democratically that they don't want to watch that. They would rather watch, you know, people like myself, I guess. Now, this is potentially going to hurt discoverability globally due to negative viewer feedback. So what happens is if somebody watches your content and they don't necessarily, you know, the algorithm didn't do its thing to determine that they might want to sit through this, they're going to bounce right away. So they're going to watch the first minute and they're going to leave and that's going to negatively impact your watch time, which is going to actually negatively affect your channel's growth and being promoted elsewhere on the platform. So you may be promoted locally, domestically, but you're going to be demoted, demoted uh, by the algorithm globally. 
okay? Now, it's also going to regulate the length and type of advertising on your channel, limiting your ability to earn ad revenue. Now, YouTube claims to be advocating for creators for this because, of course, it's going to affect their bottom line. They don't want to have to augment their algorithm to suit this. We have two goals, according to YouTube, to protect Canadian creators and the successful businesses that you've created on YouTube and to make sure that Canadian viewers can continue to watch what they love on YouTube. YouTube is advocating by speaking out publicly and working with policymakers to ensure creators are protected. It's also essential that policymakers hear from creators directly. Some creators have already raised their voice and it's making a difference. So it's just more bureaucracy, more way... Uh, more ways to spend the money that the government doesn't have and uh, on things that we don't need, on things that we never ask for, on things that none of the population is concerned about. Nobody woke up this morning and said, oh, I wish the government can feed me more propaganda today. I mean, and when you have YouTube going to bat for creators on top of it, you know it's fairly draconian, right? Let's get real. So, guys, it is what it is. Uh, I would say that you can, what, it, what is their explanation here on what to do? If you want to help, hashtag FixC11, take action through Digital First Canada, an independent organization working to advocate for creators. On their website, you can send a letter directly to your member of parliament and help and find helpful assets to use on your social channels. Okay, so it looks like we got ourselves a cause to fight for. Stay tuned guys because we are really stoked about this indoor garden that we're growing here. We got potatoes, we got zucchini, we got tomatoes. We even got some Carolina Reaper peppers, some ghost peppers, jalapeno peppers, all stuff that we're going to use to make our own very, very potent pepper spray because there's a lot of bears up here in Canada. You know, you need this kind of stuff for the bears, right? You need those pew-pews for the bears. Okay, guys, you stay safe out there. Go check out Premier Body Armor. Link in the description. Thanks for watching Canadian Prep Pro.